Yes. That's what I was putting. It's a bit, you know, be honest. It's a bit of an old man's car, isn't it? It's a bit, bit of an old car. You can lose yeah. a man's bit, you know. I mean, what, what are you doing with this? It's a piece of beauty. It's a work of art. I mean, look at the lines. The lines, I mean, look at that. It's more sort of a curve, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's abruptly ended by Jerry's bottom. <laughs> <laughs> How old is it? It's 1962. Six, I was born in 1962. Oh, he's in slightly better shape. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> How many of them are still around, do you know? Uh, I'm not sure in total. 80 of these, approximately 80 of these were built originally. Of this I mean, particular 80? mark, yeah. Eight zero? Yeah. So that is special. That's, well, yeah, it is special it's after all. Right. Even Ferrari bang out more cars than that. This is a very rare bird indeed, apparently worth up to £25,000. You've got to let this squad try and put it back together. Yeah, there's a rally coming up, there's a Bristol rally coming up, and I would welcome the opportunity to take it along. Maybe it could win a prize if it doesn't, fair it's enough, just, but just, just to get all, it there. all Bristol cars there. Yeah. Every year, Bristol fanatics gather for the annual Owners Club rally. The highlight of this event is the concourse competition. A kind of beauty parade for old cars. They actually don't drive the cars, well, you might get them dirty. It's all about appearances. Cars are judged on everything, from the quality of the upholstery to the cleanliness of the mud flaps. Nothing short of perfection will win. Preparing a car for a concourse competition can take years, but the salvage squad have got just two weeks. So, how are we getting this out of here then? I've got a trailer outside. I don't mind driving if you guys want to push. Well, I'll direct. Go on then. The first task is to get the car off Anne's drive. No, no. again. Four. Go, 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 go. This is not going to work. Winch, winch it out, winch it out. Winch winch out. Nobody yeah, told me there was a winch that would. <laughs> I was told trailer. I wasn't told there was a winch. The squad load up the Bristol to take it on its first journey in three years to a workshop in West London. If the squad are to stand any chance of winning the concourse competition, they'll need all the help they can get. Luckily, they've got just the man for the job, Anne's husband, Lance McCormack. Lance started out at Rolls-Royce making specialist limousines for the royal family. In 1990, he set up his own restoration business, He's never lost that obsession with detail and quality he learnt as an apprentice. Lance has been promising to do Anne's car up for three years, but like the kitchen shelves, he never quite got round to it. But now the waiting is over, as he and the squad map out the tasks that lie ahead. Really, we're looking into stripping off bumpers, lamps, bright work. Screens so out. When you say bright work, is that basically all the yeah, chromey bits of chrome, metal, all, all the shiny, yeah, shiny, shiny bits, shiny bits and pieces, Tr little trinkets. There. And uh, coming into the inside of the car, headlining, replacing carpets. Have you got any experience on that axle? Re up upholstery? No, no good. None at all. Not no good. No good. No good at all. I don't reckon that's as bad as it looks. No, no, that is as bad as it looks, mate. I mean, there's, there's like the speedometer. There's nothing there. Lumpy bumpies here, there. Get the baby up. Start with the clean. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Definitely. And they reckon this is a runner? Yeah. Mm. yeah it's very dirty. Yeah. According to Lance, all the engine needs is a good clean. But the car can't be driven because of a problem with the steering. There's a lot to do to get the car up to concourse competition standard. The squad must completely gut the car and remove all the old paint. The steering needs sorting. The aluminium body will need reshaping and then repainting. The upholstery needs replacing. And then the squad have got to put it all back together again. OK, let's go. Give me a hammer. Over the coming weeks, Jerry is going to discover the joys and the frustrations of hand-built cars. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Claire is going to have to try and master the black art of body shaping. It's just this new skill. You know, you want it. You really want to be able to do it well. And Axel's perseverance will be tested to the limit. Ah, oh, that love this. <sighs> Their first job is to strip everything off the car. You've got a box full of pieces.
As the squad rip into the restoration, I make a quick exit in my old Alpha. I want to find out if there really is something special about these Bristol cars. The company was started in 1949 by Sir George White. Sir George isn't around anymore, but I did manage to set up a meeting with his son, also called George. I hoped he could tell me what inspired his dad to start making these cars. What he really did love indeed was cars and always had done. Um, I've got a series of photographs of him uh, in, in motor cars really from the earliest times. Uh, that for example shows him uh, in 1915, <laughs> the age of three I suppose, <laughs> at the age of 17. He built really a, a very fine motor car there. I guess that that must be the very first Bristol um, this one here. Uh, ever, ever built, and he made that with his own hands. Not a bad effort for a 17-year-old, but then again he could always call on some pretty impressive backup. His family ran the Bristol Aircraft Company. In 1910, it was the first ever factory set up in Britain to manufacture aircraft, and by the Second World War, it was the biggest. Now zero hour has struck. The Blenheims are taking off. Bristol created the famous Blenheim bombers, the first Allied planes over Germany in 1939. But even as these planes were taking off, George's family were planning what to do with their warplane factories once the fighting was over. They were actually considering what they were going to do when the war ended, right at the lowest point in 1940-41. They decided that the aircraft engineers should turn their hands to cars. And that was why uh, the early Bristol cars were such exceptional quality. Everything was absolutely stunningly perfectly made. And the result was a very good motor car. Because they, they were making it as if they as were As if they were going to fly it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. The early Bristol cars, like this Type 400, stood out with their bulbous aerodynamic shapes and soon earned the factory a reputation for quality hand-built cars. Bristol was still making cars by hand, like this Blenheim, but never more than three a week. The gloves are on and the paint strippers out. It's a big old motor and it's all got to be stripped back to bare aluminium. While the rest of the squad are hacking away at the paint, Claire is taking a slightly more painstaking approach. She's uncovered a surprising fact about the car's history. Lance? Yep, you're on the way. Look at this. Superb. I've got the full archaeology of the car colours here. That's the blue, which it is at the moment. And then underneath looks this silvery grey. Excellent. So the car was originally silver? Yeah. Well, this is Definitely not blue. It, it, the blue, blue's like really kind of, I don't know, it just didn't... Yep, it's not exciting enough no. for this shape. This shape no. could take a silver, it's going to look really no. amazing, like an aeroplane. To get the paint off, because before this goes anywhere near paint process, all of this area here has to, has to shine virtually, you know? We can't leave any contaminants in there at all, because otherwise it could mess up a, what's a very expensive paint job. Excellent, but you're, you're on, the right, on the right track there, but there, there are hours there. Just, it's going to, you're going to have to kind of come up with a mantra to get you through it. <laughs> Mantra? Car maintenance? Anyway, while Claire tries to find inner peace, Jerry tries to work through his problems with the steering. Steering wheels come off of my hands. Lovely. The steering wheel is connected to the road wheels via the steering column. Two circular bushes hold the steering column in place. The bushes are slippery on the inside, allowing the steering column to turn while the outside of each bush is bolted down to keep the steering column steady. Buried inside this tube here are two steering bushes and they stop the steering column, which is the bit that your steering wheel goes on to, from doing this. The only problem is, Jerry can't make the new bushes fit. And it's not working, is it? Yeah, it don't fit over the shaft. Jerry looks for inspiration in the car's manual. He even calls up the Bristol car factory, but there's no one there who can remember how they're supposed to fit. Bristol's themselves have never done this before. Well, they make new cars. Well, exactly. So, if I get it right, I'm now the world's authority. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to hear. <laughs> 
the harder you push it, the tighter it puts the locating. Do you, do you think we're down to sort of like the, uh, the, the hand built car syndrome here that this was modified at the factory on the production line? Almost certainly. Um, the problem Jerry has is that Bristol cars are like Savile Row suits, each one made by hand. The guys reckon the bush is never fitted even when the car was first built and would have been trimmed to fit by a mechanic in the Bristol factory. So Jerry makes a few adjustments to the bushes. Rotary wheel. Uh, there you go. There it goes. Some way of just sort of like. Ah, ah, that's the kiddie. Yes! Wicked. Success for the world expert on Bristol bushes. It appears I am yep. indeed the world expert on fitting Bristol yes. steering yeah. Mary's after all. You can write the book. Oh, God, yeah. At least the squad can now drive safely to the rally, but with time running out, can they really turn this metal shell into a concourse classic? The salvage squad have just nine days left to transform a 1962 Bristol into a prize-winning car. They've stripped the car back to its aluminium birthday suit, but they've uncovered some rather unsightly wrinkles. If you look at this front end, it's very sculptural, all made by hand and damaged by hand as well. This has been... Oh, apart from that, it looks fine to me. No, 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 no. no. It, it's, if you let, let your hand go really slack. You just rub it across. You can feel all of the slight hollows and uh, undulations on there. Years of wear and tear have left small dents all over the car's soft aluminium body. To smooth them out, Claire is going to have to learn the panel beating skills that took Lance 25 years to perfect. OK, Claire, what I've got here are some, uh, some basic Ooh. traditional body tools. The hand weights, or dollies as we call them, of various shapes. We use these as formers and yeah. even sort of like uh, uh, anvils, miniature anvils. Um, this is a very, very old planishing hammer. This is for finishing. An old, uh, an old guy, an old friend of mine, uh, he gave me that and uh, he's not with us anymore. So It's, uh, it's, it's really uh, nice to have tools oh, that, yeah, that yeah. have sort of filtered down that lives, that way. That lives, yeah. This is a body file. There's a dreadnought blade on there. We use this for checking over the body. We don't fold a shape into the body, but this is just a mirror to checking over the device. The file doesn't change the shape of the body, it's just used to show up the dents. So you're moving. So when you do that, you're looking to see where, I'm just where looking it's for taken the, off. Yep. Well, I'm looking for the low there. spots, I'm looking for obvious yeah. high spots. So but there's a low spot there, there's a high spot there. That's it. And if you notice what I'm doing. Now Claire has identified the dent, it's down to her to remove it. Feel confident about getting that area up there? <laughs> no, I'll give it a go though. Okay. You get the smooth flipper. If you get the right tools for the job. The, get the crown of this here. Yeah. Offer that up to the centre of that. And try, or even just use the end. Yeah. Try to massage that out. Think of that as an extension of your body and, and relax. So you let, let your, your wrist go loose and flipper it. Under Lance's expert guidance, Claire flattens out the body between the specially shaped dolly and the steel flipper. Good. Look at this. It's amazing what a difference it makes. It's come back. Must be, must be really satisfying when you look down the panel. Oh, yeah. And you see just pure line, exactly as the designer intended it. The guy or whoever sat down and drew this out, he drew a shape. And, and mm. what we're doing now is putting that shape back. We, we've been put into the concourse arena, so Let's start with the body, straighten it out the best possible we can. We get the best possible paint on it, and then it's down to um, an awful lot of detailing. They're that's not looking for the car that came out of the factory, are they? No, 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 no. They're looking for a really tight car, a car, a car that in reality never existed. Mm -hmm. uh, but they want they want ultra presentation. For me, Concours doesn't exist. It's something you aspire to. Well, we've got plenty of work to be doing yet on this one before it's anywhere near a work of art. So. We carry on. We've got, to, we've got to start the front and work all through the body with this uh, same critique there. Um, it's going to be a, a, a real push, but we're, we'll get there. Mm. Okay. And when I got it right, I got it right one or two times, and it, you can really feel the difference. Really feel the difference. It's just this new skill. Uh, you know, you want it. You really want to be able to do it well. It's, it's, it's such a funny feeling. Like, just wanting to learn. To, to be as good as someone else at something like this. Magic. It is a magic thing. 
The squad are putting a lot of effort into this car, but I'm still not convinced it's worth it. The Bristol Owners Club are holding a select gathering in London's Barclay Square. I've come along to see if they can persuade me that these cars are worth all the fuss. Geoffrey Herdman, the club chairman, shows off his 402 drophead Bristol. This is just a lovely, lovely car to drive. It's like having a handmade suit rather than having a Marks and Spencer suit. You know, there yeah. is something very, very satisfying about uh, driving. And it doesn't, want, it doesn't matter what the Bristol is, because you, you know they're handmade. OK, they are idiosyncratic. In one of my Bristols, the most reliable thing was the ABC Railway Guide. I mean, I could get back home from anywhere with that, but <laughs> that's another story. But it didn't matter. That was part of the ethos of, learning, of earning a Bristol. So you're OK there. <laughs> so I'll have to go for something else. All of these indicator lights, the plastic, have gone terrible in it. So I had them done by a jeweller. And he said, well, look, while you're about it, it's all labour. So why don't, why don't you have jewels? So this is a ruby. No. This is an amethyst. This is a citrine. And this is an emerald that we have in, in, in the car. Emerald indicator. How cool is that? <laughs> now, that was a nice set of wheels. The, the Bristol car is what I would say is a gentleman's express. This is a little bit of a boy race. A boy. It's, a, it's a wild card in the, in, the, in the Bristol pack. John and Jilly Hampshire showed me their Bristol Zagato, engineered in Bristol, but styled in Italy. It was, um, it was a short run of six cars by Zagato, and it's, it's an Italian coach builder that built lots of racing machinery from the 1930s through to the 1960s. The 2.2-litre Bristol engine can power this car to speeds of over 120 miles per hour. If you're travelling in it, it's noisy. It's really noisy if you're a passenger. But when you're driving, you, you don't, don't hear it. Yeah. I mean, all you can hear is this wonderful... As a passenger, it's quite it noisy, gear. but you're right. As a driver, you just... Yeah, you you wouldn't you have a go? I wouldn't mind having a go, but... Um, I don't know, can I have a go? <laughs> yeah. Just asking yeah. the director. Yeah. Am I allowed to have a go? Yeah. <laughs> you might want to go forward oh yes. Yeah. And then you just push the button. Okay. There are now only five of these cars left in the world. Just push, press harder. Little bit again. That's it. See that lovely noise? Yeah. Right. It's reckoned to be worth over 60 grand and I'm being let loose at the wheel. So what are the other owners like at the Bristol? Well, they're all completely different. I mean, um, it's fun, you know? It's a fantastic car to drive and full of Bristol quirks, like the strangely placed indicator switch. Oh God, I've no. broken your... No, don't worry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't believe that. I've broken the car. I've broken oh, the God. car. God, it's going to cost £6,000 to restore. <laughs> don't worry. I honestly... It, was, it wasn't working very well it this wasn't. morning. <laughs> We'll glue it. We won't, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter, honestly. It oh, was, God, if this was a cab, I'd no, do a no, runner no, now. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't working particularly oh, well today, no. and now it's not working at all. So I get to drive one of the rarest cars in the world, and I break it. Despite my act of vandalism, I have to admit, I'm really getting into these cars. That was fantastic. But now I'm sold on the idea, I'm worried the squad are never going to get our Bristol up to the same standard as these immaculate cars. What we've got here yeah. is what was lurking under the paint and the fellow, as we explained earlier, when we were stripping all the paint off the car. This is a previous repair where someone's put a new back panel on it. The car had obviously once had a rear ender, which had been badly repaired. The only way to sort it out is to replace a section of the rear wing. It's come back through and ru ruined a, a potentially a really nice paint job. OK. Mm. It looks a bit savage. It's kind of a bit brutal. The damaged area is cut out. Maybe the guys would have provided more metal in that area. Lance hammers out a sheet of aluminium, recreating the complex shapes at the back of the car. Like you can see now, there's the top of the wing, there's where it goes in. in. Yeah, it's beautiful. Look yeah. at that serpentine line there. It's getting right? like 3D now. Yep. There we go. Well, that came out quite then, nice, didn't it? You can see now. See? Excellent. What we've got to do at this stage is to establish what your welding's like. 
the new piece of aluminium must be welded into place. Welding aluminium as thin as this is a specialist skill. So Lance wants to see if Axel's welding is up to it. This is scrap, so I might suggest you uh, have a go. Alrighty. Yeah. Okay. Right, what I'm up to here, I think I'm a bit over my head, really. Axel practices his technique on a piece of scrap. The welding torch uses an electric current to heat the edges of two pieces of metal until they melt and join up. At the same time, the torch melts a thin rod of metal which fills any gaps and strengthens the joint. To get a good weld, you've got to get the heat just right. Not enough and the metal won't melt. Too much and you blow a hole straight through it. This is very, very hard. You can see why it is very skilled. Look. Yeah. You, 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 work, you can cogitate all day long, but the way to do it is... Just uh, keep on. There. Lance is still not convinced by Axel's welding. Two hours later, and Axel's had enough. Ah, oh, I've had enough of this. <clears throat> nah, it's not me. I, I can get over that for you, I can work that. Yeah. It's, it'd be a less than ideal situation, but... Um, I think it, we'd end up, we've lost a day on these, on these already. Okay. And me blowing holes in this right. isn't gonna make us any more time, it's gonna actually cost us time. Axel has to admit defeat, and takes a back seat as Lance finishes off the job. You see, yeah. actually physically losing the world there. Yeah. Finally, Lance uses his panel beating wizardry to blend the weld into the rest of the body. There's the weld, that's buck welded aluminium bodywork. Simple. You are a master of something. <laughs> the old dodgy repair has been completely replaced and the flowing lines of the body have been restored. After a week of careful preparation, the car is now ready to be painted. Once more, the car is on the move, this time to a specialist paint shop down in Sussex. The squad have got seven days left before the Bristol Rally. The only problem is, the paint job is going to take five. Everything must be ready for when the car returns, so the squad pay a visit to classic car upholstery expert, Gary the Stitch. The first task is to replace the lining from the roof of the car, known as the headlining. Hi Gary, where's this headlining cloth then? Here we go, that's the stuff, lovely. Gonna... Gary wants to see the old plastic material replaced with an all-wool cloth. The old strips of fabric are used to mark out the new cloth. So how much is this a, me a metre? About £32. So we're talking like 20 quid. Yeah. These are pop-up isn't they? Having lost face with the welding, Axel decides to play it safe and cut out the fabric, leaving Jerry to sew it together. <laughs> Jerry confronts Gary's trusty industrial sewing machine. It's strong enough to pass through several layers of leather. Keep your fingers away. If it goes through, don't pull away. This machine is strong enough to go straight through your finger. Scream, shout. Whatever, but just don't yeah. move. Yeah. Just take F it easy, that just thumb. slowly. That's it. Not that slow. Yeah. <laughs> Too frightened. Blessed thing, that's why. Too frightened. No, I am. I'm absolutely terrified, Axel. Believe me. I am so unhappy here. <laughs> Jerry is completely freaked out by the machine and can't get it to sew in a straight line. Yeah, absolutely as the crow flies, providing the crow is completely drunk. <sighs> Axel takes over. Oh, easy, easy. <laughs> Come on. Is it coming out all right? Yeah. Come on, son. Absolutely. No, I'm saying it's excellent. Claire, you're sacked. Axel seams are as straight as a die. Is that the last bit? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well done. So after being floored by the welding, Axel discovers he is the undisputed champion of the sewing machine. What a shirt. 
<laughs> Here we go. As the Bristol 407 returns from the paint shop, the salvage squad reached the final phase of their restoration. It's a, it's a credit to all the work that's gone into it so far. This point from here onwards again is, is, is the bit that brings all the coach builders art together, whether it be the interior man has to meet the body man, where the paint man has to meet the engine. Everything has to flow, has to become one now. But we've got to work towards that concourse in Somerset. And um... Everything must fit perfectly. It's painstaking work and the squad have just two days left. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we go, I'd like to say can I, we're going to tape up. Yeah, you rings. don't want anything, nothing that rattling, scratching nothing scratching. Yeah, we, that could put us back. Um, too far. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'd lose the chance. There. All right. OK. A little bit of tape, John. Yes, please. Rings and zips are taped up. A <laughs> scratch at this stage could scupper their chances of winning at the Bristol Concours event. Axel, can I yeah. put you on the front, Claire? I'll put you on the rear. Yeah. And then so, suddenly it starts to breathe again. What, what you're going to be doing, you're going to be creating the face of the car again. Right. It mustn't squint. So the headlights, so I'm going to be super critical now. Um, Excellent. It's going to be a race against the clock. So Claire sorts out the tail lights, Jerry sets about refitting all the instruments, and Axel begins his task at the front of the car. This morning, I'm working on the face of the car, installing the headlights and the lights and the grill and the badge. Axel's work will be closely scrutinised by the concourse judges. The grill must be absolutely level. The headlamps must fit perfectly square onto the bodywork. A few millimetres out and the car will end up boss-eyed. Jerry tries his hand at refitting the 39-year-old windscreen. It seems he hasn't quite got the hang of it. That's it. Another hiccup. So the windscreen's cracked? It's cracked. The screen is now scrap. This could be a serious problem. Lance starts the hunt for the new screen. Thank you very much. Right, but there's, there's definitely not in your old archive somewhere, no? No. OK, all right, thank you very much for your help. Right. Nothing at all, absolutely nothing right. as, as yet. I think we're... Um, so what happens if we can't get one then? We're in the dog do, uh, really. I don't really want to be taking that along to a show, professing that it's well, restored. So we're carrying on if we can't get a screen. I think we've got to do that. We, we've, got, we've got to hope that one turns up somewhere. It's typical, isn't it? You leave the salvage squad alone for five minutes, and they bust the windscreen. and get a phone call from Axel. Lee, Lee, can you get some new windscreen? We've broken it. I don't know what they've done. Apparently, it's cracked. It's no good to us. So I've had to get on the blower, ring around, and see if I can rustle up another one. And uh, it's not easy, and I've come all the way here to Warminster in Wiltshire, and I think we've got one. I finally tracked down a Bristol 407 windscreen at specialist restorer Spencer Lane Jones. Do you know how many phone calls I've put in to get Dozens, loads, and loads, Dozens, loads and loads and loads and loads? I mean, is that, are they that rare? There aren't a lot of, lot of them about. Um, right. In fact, if I wanted one tomorrow, I wouldn't know where to go and find one. So we're taking your last <laughs> windscreen <laughs> yeah. over. Does it, when you say that, I mean, you, you say it. You know, you wouldn't know where to get another one once we took this way away. That's not a sales pitch, is it? You're not just no, trying to bump no, up the price, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> so where did this, uh, where did this one come from then? Well, it's a very sad story. There was a chap who restored his 407, and he spent years and years restoring it, and he finished it the day before the Bristol Innes Club Concourse about five years ago, and he was driving it to the concourse, and somebody drove into him and wrote the car off. No. Yeah, I mean, absolute write-off, but the screen wasn't broken. Yeah, it's a good... looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, not bad. I'll be honest with you, you'd be no good at the traffic lights, would you? Not really. Clean the <laughs> no, really. Look Just how long this is taking you. <laughs> you'd have to wait for me parked up for hours, months, days, wouldn't you? Squeegee merchants. So, what's the damage then? And I don't mean a little scratch. Well, if we had to have one made, I expect it to be over a thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, Second hand, possibly a little bit iffy. You know, might not take the stresses six, and strains. Six hundred. Six hundred quid. There is a bit of a crack there. Can I knock you down All a right. bit? Five hundred and fifty. Okay. We'll sort that out then. We'll, we'll wrap that up and uh, stand it up right for the journey home. As I wrap up the deal, Gary the Stitch helps Jerry staple the new roof lining back on the car. Right. Oh, that looks so nice. 
Look at that. They'll come out. They'll come out, yeah. Just your toe. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so nice. If the stitching wasn't pretty much bang on to start with, it wouldn't happen. So, axle stitching seems to be pretty spot on. Okay, just lay it down here for now. We'll have a look at it, see, see what's cooking there. So it's good second hand rather than a new one, yeah? It's, um, it has got a little nick in it. There's a little nick there. Right. What do you think? Um, Again. A bit disappointed, really. So all, how much was this screen? Uh, I think it was five and a half. Okay. I haggled him. I haggled him. I worked him hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, definitely. I'll be, I'll be honest, if I was there, I think... For, uh, I wouldn't have parted with 550 quid for it. Could we? It's a lot of money for a, for a damaged screen. But when you got, yeah, but it's because I think it's because it's how are you going to get them? <coughs> it's, it's less than ideal. Look, look, look at the sweep; it goes right through there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's someone that's got a worn out rubber on their on their win, win, window wiper. It's dry, isn't it? And, and they're, they're made of stainless steel, so stainless steel that's is actually like, really a, like a cutter. Right it's down gone, to here. Yeah. It's the whole thing. There. So. I'm taking it back. <laughs> Thanks for your effort. That's all right, mate. You know, I, I appreciate. I'm I appreciate that's it. That's why I'm being graphic about what's wrong with it. No, you're, you're, you're doing the right thing. You know, yeah. it's your motor. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, hey. if it ain't right, it ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> you what? going again? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to take it back to the car for you, sir? Yeah, if you wouldn't okay. mind. You know. Okay. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. smash it, mate. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. That's 550 yeah. quid you're carrying there. All right. Well, that was worthwhile, weren't it? I might have a good day. Pop the lid down, mate. I'll see right. you later. Right, don't take all day, remember? On the road again. This time I'm off to the Bristol factory. They've had another look and they think they've found just one 407 windscreen left in their stores. There's just six hours left. Axel and Lance fit the car doors. The doors must be adjusted to blend in with the rest of the body. Yeah. Well, One slip now, and the paintwork would get badly chipped. There you go, look at that. That's for, yeah, the first, that's for the first try. We don't call them gaps, we call them clearances. With time running out, Jerry puts the finishing touches to the instrument panel. Right, we get this off. I'm sure something's going to go wrong in here, Claire. <laughs> the badge. Finally, Axel completes the face of the car. The headlamps have been fitted, the grill is on, and the Bristol is smiling again. But then, Lance finds something has gone seriously wrong. That's ridiculous. Man. Who scratched the front then? Where? Here. Where? Axel has spent over a day trying to get the face of the Bristol perfect. But now there's a flaw, just where you don't want it. I've been working. If I've done it, I'm sorry, but I didn't yeah, know I'd done it. it. If I'd done it, I'd put my hands up to it, but... It's not really what we want to have happening no, at this stage really. in the game. If it was me, I'm sorry, but I don't remember doing it. I mean, zips are covered, so... That's ridiculous, man. It's yeah. the only visible badge on the car that says Bristol, apart from the hubcaps. So it is, it is the, it's the most focal point of the car. It couldn't have happened in a worse place. Yeah. Didn't need that scratch. Some more days behind, including the windscreen. Whoops. Right, I've got a new windscreen here from Bristol Cars. Number two, let's see if this one works. Hello. Oh, the man, excellent. This is the last windscreen you're getting off me. Do In not break world. it, do not drop it. Nice one, mate. You will die. You're a diamond. You Have you got that? Oh, yep, yeah, lovely. Have you got that? Careful Cheers, mate. That. Yeah, I will be. So, are you pleased with the way it's coming on? Oh, I am actually. Here's a couple of hiccups, obviously, with the, the, the screen and the, um, and the the paint defect. Paint defect? Yeah. What defect? Paint defect, as in, will Spartacus or someone please please own up? So, the scratch on there. Which oh. Is, uh, it, couldn't have, it couldn't have gone on in a better place. Oh, think. cool. You know, people look at the car, it's not laden with badges, they're going to be looking for the identity. Oh, what's yeah. that car? It's, uh, That's a scratch. If it's there, that's it's that. Drawn yeah, it's there. not having a bogey on the end of your nose. So, Jerry, did you do it? The scratch? I'm going to be asking everybody, I'm not just accusing you. Because I'm a very good body language reader. 
your eyes went down and to the left. That means you lied. I saw that on the film, The Negotiator. Did Samuel you? L. Jackson told me that. What well, if I were to go up, <laughs> up and to the right? If you go up and to the right, um, I think that means you've got wind. Claire? Yeah? Did you scratch the car? No, it wasn't me. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to see if anybody will crack under pressure. No. <laughs> I just need to put a, a quick question to you. Yeah. Right. First of all, right. who won the long jump in the 1968 Mexico Olympics? World record holder. It's lasted for many years. Pass. Bob Beeman. Right. Okay, second question. Did you scratch that car? <laughs> no. No? No. The squad remained tight-lipped. I'll have to get the thumb screws out. Nobody fancied the job of fitting our precious screen, so we've called in professional fitter Jeff Window Smith. Jeff has to slide the screen into the rubber seals that hold it in place. It's a tight fit. We did tell him it was the last one in the world. That's not doing anything, is it? It's tired, though. Yeah. But are we insured? <laughs> this is a problem. This is it. This No, no, this is a problem. This is it's the it. windscreen. It. Finito. Yeah, it's goggles, as this one goes. Driving to Somerset with goggles on. Despite the pressure, Jeff squeezes the screen into place. Bit of dum dum in there? Okay, we'll see, sir. Thanks very much. What, Good one. job, well done. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. Top man. Cheers. Wicked. Okay. Our man has saved the day. One lovely windscreen. Don't want to tap it too hard. <laughs> it's midnight. In just 12 hours, the squad are due at the Bristol Owners Club rally. Now I'm going to change these ones for plate. There's just one last thing to check the engine. Nice to hear it. The Bristol fires up and they're on their way. The exhausted squad work through the night, but can they do enough to win the ultimate prize, the concourse, now only hours away? After two weeks hard graft, the salvage squad have brought this 1962 Bristol car back to life. After years of neglect, the car is back on the road and on its way to the Bristol Owners Club Rally in Somerset. Cars from every era of the Bristol history are here and they are all immaculate. With two hours left before the cars are judged, the air is filled with the squeak of chamois leather and the smell of wax. Oh, I got the toolkit. Yeah. The squad check out the opposition. Some of the competitors here have spent years preparing their cars for this show. So after just two weeks work, could our Bristol possibly make the grade? The Bristol gets one last polish and crucially, Axel lines up the hubcaps. Just a couple of weeks ago, the car was a wreck sitting on Anne McCormack's drive. She hasn't seen the car since we took it off her. What do you think? Wow! It's a different colour, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's different altogether, I can't believe it. They oh did get. They God. did get. When I first saw it, they got the ump because I said it'd be nicer when you've covered up the undercoat. But they, uh, they took that all away. <laughs> it's lovely. It's all new chrome. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's very shiny. Thank you. Absolutely so, fantastic. Right, you. Yeah. Who didn't think much of it when he first saw it? Yeah. Well, you're not having what it now. What do you think now? <laughs> what do I think now? It's, I must admit, it is, I do prefer it, this colour. It was very dull before, but now I think it looks like a racing car. What do you think its chances are? I think we've got, I've had a good look at the competition and I think we've got every chance in our class. <laughs> Why are you so confident, Jerry? There aren't any other cars. There are. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only car in your class. That's good. Monopoly. So, 
first or last? First or last. Still, Concours rules say the car will only win the cup if it scores over 85% of the possible marks. To maximise the possible silverware, Anna's put on a bit of a spread in the hope of winning the Treasurer's Award for the best picnic. Even the squad have spruced themselves up for the event. I shall sit next to Claire then. As we tuck into the cucumber sarnies, the concourse judging begins in earnest. The concourse is an event specially designed for the auto-obsessive. The cars are subjected to a full body search as judges look for the tiniest speck of rust or hint of dirt. Vehicles are transformed from practical driving machines into glorified pieces of sculpture. Nuts and bolts must shine, even the tyres must be in perfect condition. Judges are looking for no less than the perfect car. And good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We've come to uh, judge this car, so whose car is it, please? That'll be... Uh, is it one? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's, it's Anne's car. It's your car, Anne. Well, fantastic. Well, it uh, looks very nicely prepared. Thank you. Uh, this is Jim, I'm Jerry, and uh, if we may now, we'd like to inspect uh, the car, going through every aspect of it, the engine, uh, the under body compartments, the interior... The, the moment of truth has arrived. <laughs> Bit of dirt over there, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, you know what that is, isn't yeah. it? That's, uh, that's dirt. Oh! <laughs> that is. Right, right. We don't want too much no, of that, I'll be honest it. with you, I, I don't mean to you know, put anything upon you here, but uh, we didn't actually check your hands before you looked in the car. <laughs> you may have planted that dirt there. <laughs> you may have had grubby hands off the opposition and put it in there. Seriously, this car is in immaculate condition. It really is. What do you think, Jim? Well, we take um, a few be points just off Just a bit there. brighter, couldn't we? Yeah. Just let down by the rust over there. But it is original. Mm. It is yes. original. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's a little rust. rust. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, electrical wiring and rubber hoses, apart from that rather loose wire, that's rather interesting. Yeah. Do you see that? It's going nowhere. The brake level indicator. Ah. ah yeah, yeah. Right. I think we can probably give them 45, do you think? Looking good. 45 out of 50. Yes! <laughs> Not a bad start. Absolute spot. Yep. Uh, just make sure it wasn't luck. Thank you. Good clearance. Yep. We all right over there, Jim? So give us a maximum. Go on, Jim. 49. Nearly perfect. <laughs> Someone has not cleaned the battery compartment. I'm terribly sorry, but we're only going to give you 20 out of 50 for this. OK. Uh, you leave wrong. us actually with, with very little alternative. I understand. <laughs> I'll just find out who was supposed to clean that and have them killed. Who was, who was supposed to clean that? 30 points dropped. We could be in trouble. Spartacus. Now we come to the interior. Upholstery and door panels, including trim, piping, etc. Oh, gosh, it's stunning, isn't it? Would you like to sit in, sir? <laughs> oh, yes, please. <laughs> no, no, the no, back of the Do you like the head oh, running? Right. Screws, line, screws lining up, sir. Oh, yeah. Oops. Here's a fruzy bar. <laughs> no extra marks for that, though. Nice try. Condition and cleanliness, I think we shall give them 40 out of 40. Result. What do you think of the headlining? Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, <laughs> Perfect. Perfect headlining, Jerry. It now all hinges on the bodywork, and there's the scratch. It's now hunt the blemish. <laughs> if there's a blemish, Jim will find it. Now they will find it. They better not be. No, it's not. Can't do blemishes. That is Mr. the rest. It's a blemish. It is. Oh, spoil sport. Hey. I just saw you do that. <laughs> yeah, with that pen. <laughs> Eagle-eyed Jim spots the scratch, but how will it affect the marks? Or should we just give it 200? 199. 199. Oh! 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 A fellow, a fellow oh, brother of the razor. <laughs> as well. Despite the blemish, the bodywork still scores amazingly high. We have never ever 
marked to car as a high as 199. Is oh, well, that right? Thank you. That is absolutely thank you. right. Never Excellent. before. 370 out of 400 for the body work, um, that, which is extraordinary. So have we done it? The squad must get over 1,000 points to win the cup. Out of 1,200, you have scored 1,079. That yes, means you've fair. dropped just over 100 points, 121 points, which is quite extraordinary. That good is or excellent. bad? That's good. Oh, yeah. absolutely wonderful. Well done, wonderful job. Well done, Thank, Thank, you Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. All that hard work has paid off. We've also got the picnic over here. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I thought you'd never <laughs> But it's still all to play for. What about the picnic? Well, I have to say, Anne, where's Anne? I'm Anne here. And this is most elegant, and I Thank think you. that this definitely wins the treasurer's, or even the chairman's prize for the best picnic. Thank you. And I just happen to have a bottle of cold champagne ready for you. The salvage squad have done the double. Ralph Hewitt Trophy, which is awarded for the Type 406 or 407. There is only one car in the class that is merit sufficient points. We still awarded the prize. Find out more about the Salvage Squad on the website at channel4.com science and they'll be doing a web chat at the same address in a few moments.